the five oldest schools in Jamaica. Number five, Titchfield High School. Titchfield High School was established in 1786 in Port Antonio in an area called Free School. In the 18th century, these schools were created from their benefactors' concerns for the education of the country's poor, usually the children of poor whites. There were no systems in place for educating children of the enslaved class. The Jamaican School Commission took over the management of these schools from the Schools Trust in 1883. It leased from the government the old military barracks of Fort George and a day school for boys and one for girls was established in 1886 with Major W. H. Plant as headmaster. At first, the school consisted of infant, elementary and secondary department, but the elementary and infant department were later separated from the trust, leaving just the high school. Five courses were taught, reading, writing, arithmetic, Greek and Latin. Number 4. Rossi's High School the history of the Rossi's High School dates back 13 years before the actual establishment of that institution. Martin Rossi, a French refugee, in gratitude to the town of Lucy for kindness shown to him, bequeathed in his will, dated 23rd of July 1764, provision for the establishment of a trust school for the children of Hanover. The school was established on the 22nd of December 1777 when the Jamaica Assembly passed an act and thereafter the free school was formally set up. In 1982, Rossi's High School was merged with the Hanover Secondary School. The combined school retained the name Rossi's High School. The traditional colors of the Rossi's High School are yellow, blue and green. The school consists of two campuses, the main campus located on Watson Taylor Drive and the Fort Charlotte campus on Fort Charlotte Drive. Number 3. St. Jago High School this school actually opened its doors during slavery, in the year 1744. In 1739, Mr. Peter Beckford, a rich planter and a God-fearing fellow who wanted to help the poor, left £1,000 sterling in his will to be used for the building of a free school for the poor. Others also made contributions, and in 1744, the free school of St. Jago de la Vega was opened at the northwest corner of Young and Beckford Streets. Another school, the Simmons Charity School, was opened in 1833 after the Honorable Francis Smith. In 1830, he left £3,000 sterling to establish a school in the doctrines of the Church of England. In 1846, the two schools became one with a new name, Beckfords and Simmons. According to the current principal, Keith Noel, the school has managed to keep its objective of providing a quality education for the poor, though other sectors of society have also benefited. It was not until 1897 that Archbishop Natal of the parish established the Cathedral High School for Girls. Later, this school and the Beckfords and Simmets was to become the St. Diego High School. More than 1,600 students now attend the school at its new location on Monk Street. St. Diego currently offers a full academic and sports program, including football, volleyball, basketball, table tennis, rugby, and a track and field. Did you know that in its years as a boarding institution, Students from as far away as South America attended school at Beckfords and Simmets. Although the school started as a free school for the poor, the standard of teaching was so high that it was once known as the school of the elite. Please give the video a thumbs up. In photographs showing students of the new boys and the girls high school, more than half of them were white students. St. Jago is the only school to have won both boys and girls champs, winning girls champs as Cathedral High. St. Jago had seven athletes and two officials in 2000 Olympics. Every Olympic team for the last 20 years has included St. Jago past students. St. Jago has been the holder of the prestigious Marcus Garvey Award for the Performing Arts since 1994. That's the highest such award given by the Jamaica Cultural Development Foundation. St. Jago has also won the award for Best School in Music for the past five years. Jago student Sheldon Simmet won the Jamaica Open Scholarship in 2000. The award given to the A-level student with the highest grades. One third of the teaching staff of St. Jago is old boys and old girls. The old girls and boys have been responsible for much development at the school, including the opening of the computer lab. Among St. Jago's celebrity alumni are national hero Norman Washington Manley, Chief Justice Lensley Wolf, OJ, Judge Elise Francis, Dr. Ken Ratchery, Carl Ratchery, and the playwright actor Trevor Rohn. In the field of sports, 
Bert Cameron, Michelle Freeman, Greg McGoo, Juliet Campbell, and Peter Gay Dowdy, as well as musicians Trevor Beckford and Arville Manning, all went to St. Jago's High School. Number 2. Manning's High School The history of the Manning School dates back to a quarter of a century before the actual setting up of the school. When in 1711, Thomas Manning, a Westmoreland planter, bequeathed a gift of land for setting up a free school in the parish of Westmoreland. The legal formalities that facilitated the effecting of his will were formalized in 1738 when the Jamaica Assembly made this possible by passing off an act after which the free school was formally established. It is interesting to note that the school was established on the present site near Savannah Lamar, instead of the lands left by Manning at Burn Savannah Pen at the northern end of George's Plain. During 1780, hurricane caused extensive damage to the school and the board petitioned the House of Assembly for help to effect repairs. As the years progressed, the 20th century saw a restructuring of the school into a modern grammar school. The oldest existing section of the school, which was built in the early 20th century, is known as the Thomas Manning Building, so named in honor of the school's founder and is the most outstanding building on the entire school's property. Today, it is used as a library and a classrooms. The Thomas Manning Building is a charming structure, which was constructed from timber that rests on a masonry plinth, typical of the Georgian architecture. The building is perfectly symmetrical in elevation. However, for its function in the tropics, the architect added several features. On all sides of the building, there are deep verandas to add shade. The vented steep gable roofs expels hot air, and a cupola with fixed jalousies provide relief from any warm air trapped in the roof. The featured combination creates a perfect example of striking colonial architecture. Number 1. Ulmer's High School Founded on May 21, 1729, Woolmer's Boys School can claim to be the oldest school in the West Indies. This was the day John Woolmer made his last will and testament, in which he left the bulk of his estate for the foundation of a free school in the parish in which he happened to die. The sum of his legacy was £2,360 sterling. Little is known of John Woolmer except that he was a goldsmith who practiced his craft in Kingston for more than 20 years. He died in Kingston on June 29th. 1729. There were some delays in giving effect to Ulmer's will, but after many amendments and conferences between the House of Assembly and the Council, a law was passed and the Ulmer's Trust, which would manage the affairs of the school, was established in 1736. Before the end of the 18th century, in 1782, Ulmer's began enrolling girls. The school had a record of 64 boys and 16 girls on roll. The staff consisted of an headmaster, a writing master, an accountant, a teacher of mathematics, and a teacher of French and Spanish languages. In 1896, the school was separated to create a school for boys and a school for girls, and independent heads were appointed to facilitate the changes. The Ulmer School was originally situated in downtown Kingston, next to the Kingston Parish Church for most of its life, prior to the 1907 earthquake. The school located on Church Street is still known today as the Ulmer's Yard. Today, the original location of the school is now a parking lot and vendor's arcade. After the 1907 earthquake that severely damaged most of the school buildings, the school was moved to its present site. North of the Kingston Racecourse are what is now known as the National Heroes Park. In 1941, at the instigation of Mistress Evelyn Skempton, the then headmistress of Ulmer's Girls, a preparatory school was established to provide a girls' school with students, and so the preparatory school opened its doors with six little girls. Over the years, Ulmer's boys, girls, and preparatory schools have had many benefactors who have contributed substantially to the growth and development of the institution. These benefactors have helped to ensure that in the closing years of the 20th century, the schools comprise of some 3,000 students and 150 faculty members. This fulfilled the hope expressed in the law of 1736 that Ulmer's would become a very considerable and beneficial seminary of learning for youth. Thank you for watching.